I take Sean the threat of death from me, okay? I don't have it, but I can make it available under secrecy. That means that I wouldn't be liable because I don't want to be getting framed for it. Okay. All right. Um. It was a Friday at 1.30 in the morning on May 18, 2018, when a 40-year-old South African native man enters the Trump National Doral. He is dressed in all black, carrying a handgun, and he appears to be on a mission. Hotel employees are forced to run as he enters the hotel lobby. After clearing it out, the man reappears with an American flag, which he then drapes across the hotel counter, all while shooting his gun off into the ceiling and screaming like a psychotic cowboy on meth. In a fit of rage, he then proceeds to smash all of the computers. It is here when the man, later identified as Jonathan Audi, notices that he now has company, and that the Miami police have arrived to the scene. He immediately puts down his gun, raises his hands up, and surrenders. But the cops say, fuck that, and they start busting shots. He then grabs his gun, returns fire, and engages in a full-blown shootout. He then makes a run for it and police give chase. He slips on the marble floor before getting shot in the leg as he makes his way up the staircase, only to find that he ran into a dead end. With nowhere else to run, he's then finally apprehended by police. Now, you may ask yourself, what the fuck does this have to do with P. Diddy, or the allegations against him? Well, this is where our story actually begins, because when police interrogate the man, he has some very shocking information to share with detectives. Information that only makes sense with the hindsight of 2023. These are the Diddy files, and this is the smoking gun. And we have more breaking news. Music mogul Sean Diddy Combs is accused of rape. A lawsuit by R&B singer Cassie claims that she was in a years-long relationship with Combs that also involved beatings. The singer claims Combs trapped her in a cycle of abuse, violence, and sex trafficking. The lawsuit claims Combs punched, kicked, and stomped on her, and it alleges Combs blew up a man's car after learning that he was romantically involved with Cassie. Yeah, I'm a little scared of Diddy. You know I mean, I'm just being honest. Like, I'm kind of speaking about all this kind of knowing that everybody else that y'all consider that you trust or whatever they won't say a fucking word i listened to the breakfast club they were pathetic you know what i mean they were like oh okay what was it what happened oh well, prayers for everybody they said this little generic thing right yo they said cassie was getting pummeled by dozens of male prostitute without her consent in freak offs getting her ass beat to a bloody pulp and yeah for decades you know, the Breakfast Club says, well, you know, prayers to everybody. This is this is kind of crazy. I'm like, what? <laughs> they hear me call city girls flopped. Yo, man, act me hard on the females. What? They go, what? I'm like, yo, I see what it is. You know, uh, everybody done folded. I ain't going to I think my man, even Joe Button, just folded. Joe was putting out a podcast. I think he was going to talk about it. But here's the thing, man. I think nobody really want to make Sean Combs their enemy, and neither do I. I'm not trying to make this guy my enemy. But I'm also, you know, I, like, again, m maybe I just haven't gotten the memo yet. I, again, I keep always telling y'all I'm an industry outsider. I'm not going to use the fact that everybody's scared of him for me to just skip this entire topic, okay? I'm not going to make up lies on him neither, nor am I going to be wishing that, you know, everything is true or wishing for his downfall. I'm going to keep it as real as possible, all right? Uh, so, yeah, very explosive and breaking news that happened in the last 24 hours. I don't think niggas even watch podcasts. Niggas blow my phone up. Yo, y'all niggas better keep it real yeah. on Diddy. Don't <laughs> let Joe be skating by. Yeah. I'm like, yo, fam. somebody. At least they let y'all. The niggas are telling me, yo, what Joe going to say? I said, nigga, I, ask Joe. Why are you asking me what Joe going to say? Or tune in. Yeah. Fuck. Yo, are y'all stupid? <laughs> like, let's have a moment. No, nah, for real. Damn. Turn up. Y'all gonna make me take these fucking shades off. Turn up in your Travis Scott's cool. while this is Travis Scott. I'm trying to respect the gospel, clean version of this podcast. I don't feel like I need to come in here and have word vomit about my discernment when it comes to some of the evil shit that goes on in the industry. And don't think that I'm the publicist for none of it. I am not because I come in here and do a podcast twice a week. This ain't gonna go like that. You wanna ask me about something? Ask me about my mom, my dad, my kids. And shit that I know a little bit about. I don't give a fuck who, what none of these people is doing outside of this. I'm here for the music. I say it repeatedly. Not the people. Mm. None of the people. Mm. 
Y'all didn't have a problem with calling out R. Kelly before he got found guilty. Everybody kept saying, yo, we keep hearing this thing is on the weirdo shit. <laughs> a lot of people doing it for Trey Songs now. They're like, yo, I ain't gonna lie. We keep hearing too many stories about Trey Songs. Something is up. But with Diddy, nobody's ever heard nothing. Ain't this odd? Nobody never heard nothing? Really? Nothing, I never heard nothing. That's why it sounds pretty odd to me. When it comes to Diddy, everyone seems to have amnesia. But if we were able to travel back five years in time and be a fly on the wall, we would find a man who appears to be immune to the disease. When detectives finally interview Jonathan Audi, they are absolutely shocked with what the man reveals. They're gay to both Diddy and Ross and Cat. They're all gay. DJ Kelly, Rick. Ross and PD? Yeah. They all gay? Yeah. Gotcha. If I saw this interview when it was originally released in 2018, I would have told you that this guy is batshit crazy. I would have guessed that the man had been smoking meth, or that he had some type of mental disorder, like schizophrenia. At the very least I would have considered him to be a conspiracy theorist, and even if I were to be correct with all of my assumptions, it still wouldn't make a difference, because five years after this interview, we would get receipts for some of these allegations. Receipts in the form of a lawsuit filed by Cassie Ventura. I have to give you a disclaimer before showing you the interview. As far as my knowledge, only the claims about P. Diddy have receipts. I say that because like I said, Jonathan Audi appears to be batshit crazy, and if you were to go watch the whole interview, you would see that he makes a slew of outrageous allegations. This video will only focus on the claims relating to Diddy, and specifically the claims that come with receipts. Um, I had sex with Cassie and Sean. Basically, he would uh, he would today tell me what to do with Cassie. I had like 15 encounters, and I heard lots of business. Cause what they would do is Sean talks a lot on the on the phone and on the TV with people and stuff. And I would be in the I was like a slave. Okay, for them that's what I was. That's all. All right. Um, I caught herpes. And I came back and I seen him for the reason and won. Bro, they didn't want. Did Mark Erebus and Ben Mercedes were his attorneys, okay? And Christopher Leon's here was my attorney. They asked me to turn in that, which was the video recording, and I did so. They gave it back to me accidentally, and it's possible, I, I threw everything out, it's possible I can produce a copy. Yeah, it's possible. I'm not sure. Now, um, how does this lead towards Donald Trump? Okay. The Mercedes family, uh -huh. Ben Mercedes, uh -huh. that works with Mark Garagos. Mark Garagos used to be Michael Jackson attorney. Yeah, out in Los Angeles. Yeah. yeah. He had a, yeah, he tried Michael and they all did him, okay? He did all the dogs. They all did him because they keep the royalties of the music. Michael alone made $860 million alone last year, okay, in 2017, which who keeps that royalty? The music companies. Who represents the media and entertainment in the United States? Most of them, Mercedes does. Kenny Mercedes, which is Grimmer Mercedes Shire out of, Shire out of New York, okay? okay? So out of curiosity, I looked up how much Michael Jackson made in 2016 and 2017, and much to my surprise, in 2016, the guy really did earn over $800 million. The king of pop had the highest annual total for any entertainer, dead or alive. To be fair, this was mostly due to the sale of his Sony catalog. The following year in 2017, Michael Jackson earned $75 million, which is still an astonishing amount of revenue to be generated after being dead for 8 years. And it turns out that Mark Gerard did indeed represent Michael Jackson's estate, but has denied any wrongdoing. And as for the Mazelis family, a quick Google search will let you know that they are also powerhouse attorneys in the industry, and that Ben's father, Kenny Mazelis, has been representing Diddy since the beginning of his career, and Puff has always viewed him as a strong father figure. Back in 2019 in an interview with Variety, Sean Combs goes on to list some of the famous celebrities that Kenny Mazelis represents. He then says, quote, I know I'm forgetting a bunch more people. He basically represents everyone, but 
but I can say that I'm the special one. Yo fam, Puffy just told us to go to the store in Brooklyn and bring him back a cheesecake and walk. What? What you gotta say now? What you gotta say now? You ain't got shit to say. Baby, yo babe. I mean, shit getting weird. Come on, baby. So, five years before the Diddy lawsuit, this guy Jonathan Oddy is on camera with detectives saying that he was a sex slave for P. Diddy and that he had like 15 collars, then caught a venereal disease, sued Diddy and won the case. Okay, holy fuck. That is a ton of information. Let's break down the math on that real quick. If 1 plus 2 equals the square root of 3, then goddammit, I think the math might make sense. Holy Diddy files Batman. I think we solved the riddle. When Oddie filed his lawsuit against Diddy, he began communication with Combs' attorneys. And according to Oddie, this is what ultimately led to him shooting up the Trump national door. As I said earlier, I cannot discern if this man is on meth, schizophrenic, or if he is genuinely sharing information that he obtained from dealing with Diddy. Okay, how do I know this? Yeah, that's what I want to know. How do you know this? Do you know Sean Combs? Pop Daddy? Yeah. P. Diddy, whatever you call it. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, he's part of what's called the Boulet. The Boulet is the Boulet's a branch of the Illuminati. Okay. It's the black people. Okay. Uh, I'm from Africa, so I'm not a racist. Okay. okay you my brother, so I like black people. Okay. My, my mom, I was raised by an by a African woman in my house. Okay. okay. She was just a servant, but she was my, my own. She, you know, took care of me. Right. So I love black people. Okay. Okay. Um, I had settlement with Sean. Okay. He's Donald Trump. Okay, because he used to belong to their side. You understand? He used to belong to that eliminated group that I told you about, which is an elite group, okay, of individuals which run the whole country. It's fun to entertain these ideas, but it definitely sounds like a conversation for folks who wear tinfoil hats. So I wouldn't put too much stock into these claims, and I would take this information with a grain of salt. But what we do know is that the freak of allegations make a lot more sense giving the context of this interview. Something to note is that the lawsuit explicitly refers to these gatherings as freak-offs, so it really does make you wonder what kind of freak show has Diddy been running for the past three decades, and how much of the industry is complicit in the lifestyle that Mr. Combs has allegedly been living. You talking about the freak off session where they used to do in the studio and all of that over different entertainers' houses and stuff? Where they be having them parties where they won't invite you to? And they'd be like, we having a party tonight, but this ain't your kind of party. You'd be like, yeah, I ain't going. I don't want to go. Freak off parties? When you go in there and it'd be, uh, yo, let me tell you something. We used to go in the club. We go into the nightclub, right? And we go and get to the VIP. All of these girls come around the VIP and they just be standing there. And like, let me tell you something, man. I'm gonna get back with you. We gotta rewind this back. We used to go to the when we go to the club, we used to have these bottles, right? And on this bottle, they be they be regular Moet bottles. On them bottles right there, they'd been to have something to make the girls be real, real slippery and all of this kind of stuff. So when you get up, they be like, don't touch them bottles right there and only drink them bottles right there. So we already knew what the drill was. You just don't mess with them bottles, right? Then all of the girls is in the club after a while. They all running, look, opening up their mouth like little birds. He just running around just popping pills in their mouth. Pop, pill, 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 pill. And then that was the party. But all of the females that was in, that's what they wanted. That was what part, it was part of the hip hop culture. We ain't see nothing wrong with it until Bill Cosby got in trouble. He did one too many. You know why everybody else is quiet? Cause everybody else seemingly may have been on some bullshit. Man, look, <laughs> I used to, let me tell you something, I mean to cut you, this funny. I used to, I used to, you know, we used to be on the road, you know, you'd be like, yo, let me go over to my puff room and see what they doing. And you knock on puff door, he'd be sitting there damn near butt naked. You ever just had a grown ass man answer his hotel door butt naked and they'd be like, come on in. You'd be like, mm, I'll come back. You you ever close your eyes, you'd be like, I guess you're not presentable. And then walk away, cause see what happens is, if they be like, come on in, and then you come on in, they be like, this man just came into my room, I'm sitting there butt ass naked, I told him to come on in, and he came on in. You be like, so what's going on for the day? Acting like you don't notice he there naked. You be like, bro, put some clothes on. What are you doing? Walk I don't wanna see you naked. Grown man stuff, yo, that's kinda disrespectful. 
So when you get that's that's called the test off. How you make sure you breaking in. Yo, call call the artists up here to the room, tell them I'm gonna have a meeting by my tub. He be in there by the tub and stuff, soaking and stuff. But at naked, you be like, how the hell am I supposed to have a meeting with a nigga butt naked in the tub? Nah, man, I come back, man. Let me know when you presentable. That and then freak off parties, freak off parties, man. Listen, I'm not an angel. I ain't never did nothing morally incorrect, but I definitely not. The girls definitely have my share of pretty women and being famous. It just came with the it came with the life, but also what came with it was a lesson. Also, what came with it was, you know what? You can't keep doing the same thing over and over and over again and still expect to find somebody to, tru to truly love you. That right there, those kind of parties kept me from finding somebody who, who really cared about me. Well, yeah. No shit. I imagine it was hard for you to find love. Because how could any of those women love you when they are unconscious? And his reasons for stopping this behavior are quite self-centered because it appears that Mark Curry's moral epiphany only really occurred when he was trying to find a suitable mate. Regardless of the reasoning, I think it is still a good thing that he stopped that awful behavior. But I must say, I do find it rather funny how self-centered folks always seem to lack self-awareness. And it took me to leave those kind of parties, those kind of people, all that energy alone, just to, to even better understand me. That's what I did. That's why I've been. That's why I, I totally vanished from everything and said, you know, I'm going to be a better man, a, a stronger man. And that's what I recommended that he do. I'd be like, bro, it's time for you to be a stronger, bigger, a bigger person. But he still wanted to remain minute. And that's what's happening to him today. See him. Yeah, that's wild, man. Him opening up the door naked, man. That's weird behavior. Yeah. You be anytime a man's naked around you and they feel comfortable with being naked around you, you know what I'm saying? You be like, something ain't right, man. What do you you know what I mean? You know I knocked on the door, you knew it was another dude at the door. Like when I knock, you know what I'm saying? Then you can just go open the door, come on in. Walking with his butt out. You know, ah, nah, I just close the door. I I see you later, bro. I guess y'all not ready for the day. So, that's weird behavior. Yes, very weird behavior indeed. Well, I guess that answers our question. Reminds me of the old saying. The industry is filled with deviant leeches. And it's like the more money we come across, the more problems we see. Speaking of Big, do you know that there are rumors saying that Puffy put the hit out on Biggie Smalls? And sure, we can chalk that all up to the tinfoil hats. And when I first heard this rumor years ago, I didn't believe it. But then again, I also didn't believe the rumors that Diddy put the hit out on Tupac until Key 50 snitched on him. And then we have the rumors of Diddy having Kim Porter murdered and Heavy D murdered and blowing up Kid Cudi's car. And fuck, the list goes on. It's like it can't stop won't stop. I just cannot imagine having a billion dollars just to act like this and put my face on vodka bottles. Diddy, was this it? Was this your big plan? Is this why you took Big and Chupac from us? So that you can be an abusive deviant dirtbag while not contributing a lick of talent to the world. You a living piece of shit. God damn it, you took Big and Chupac. What in the actual fuck? And that's one of the bad things about the game is when you get large, even your friends are turning against you, man. So I made a song about it. But I mean, how real is your prayer? Like people constantly come in and want to. Oh man, I mean that's real. That's, I mean, I, I think about that every day. Every day it's real. That's how real it is. I think somebody's trying to kill me. I'll be waking up paranoid. I'll be really scared. I'll just be paranoid. <laughs> that's just the way I am. You know, <laughs> you be seeing me scared to death. At the same time, you gotta watch your money. There's so much funny shit in this game where I make a play with your money and you won't even know. I mean, as soon as I got in the game, I got a lawyer to watch my lawyer. That's just the way it's supposed to be played. You know what I'm saying? I speak to niggas. I speak to niggas that got money in the game and they let me know, yo, dog, it's a dog eat dog world. Niggas is trying to get as much as they can. And if you're an ignorant motherfucker, they gonna thrive off that. They can tell you anything. And I'm, I've never been stupid, so. 
And especially with a whole big lump sum of money, I got to keep my eye on that. So I just stay more on the business side of everything instead of being a nigga that's going to get drunk at the bar and fuck all the bitches and, and just stay in hotels all night and just trick a whole lot of money. I stay home with my wife and watch my money. It comes. It's a lot easier that way. And you have a lot of money. Is your family the most important thing for you? Yeah, at this time right now, yeah. I mean, I ain't going to lie. At one point, the music was more important because I knew that if I did good in the music, I could take care of my family a lot better. So I was more pushing towards making sure the music was tight, making sure every show I did was right, and just trying to get as much money as I could so I could take care of my family. Now that the job is basically done, I could chill. My wife's album is about to come out in like maybe a month or two. But I could just chill and just watch her. You know, just chill with her. Big wanted his publishing. Big wanted his marketing. He knew he couldn't go nowhere and be who he needed to be without it. So if Puff would have told that nigga to go to hell with gasoline draws on, that nigga would have went to hell. All money ain't good money, brother. That's my take on it, man. I don't know if you like it or not.